Hello my friends and welcome back to another Brotato random random run. I've been really enjoying doing these so this is what we're gonna do today. Um, I realized of course that if I tell you the results of the previous video at the beginning of this video then that's a spoiler so I am going to spoil the previous video now if you haven't gone and watched it yet do that before you hear the spoiler. Alright so last time we got Speedy with the wrench and died on the bosses. So we're back to zero win streak. Uh, that was a pretty tough run and I didn't find enough defensive stats. I definitely need to focus harder on finding defensive stats during these runs. Let's get into this one. So I am going to hit random. Just to quickly reiterate the rules here, I'm gonna random a character and then random a weapon. I have to use that weapon in some way, although I don't have to just build six of that weapon and I'm going to be posting these as I play them. So uh, we will be trying to build as long a win streak as possible, although we're starting over at ground zero right now. Let's get going. All right, so our character is the cryptid. So basically we want, we're hoping for a weapon that doesn't accidentally break trees for us and that synergizes with having a lot of dodge and a lot of regeneration. Let's see what we get. And our weapon is the ghost axe. So this will be relatively easy to not break trees with, although it doesn't have a lot of synergy with the rest of our kit really. It does make it easier to get our dodge up to that 70% cap, but we're gonna have to build a lot of armor to manage to survive given our minus armor from the ethereal weapon tag. Well, let's see what we can do with the cryptid. You should usually be able to get 1% damage off the first wave here. We are also getting extremely unlucky on <laughs> material drops from these enemies. So when, when the enemies have lower material drops, it's a percent chance, so it's luck based. And we got pretty unlucky on the material drops, although because we're cryptid, we're still ahead of where other characters would be since we didn't break any trees there. Let me re-roll this, I think. We're looking to get some harvesting. Let's get that going. And then here, I'm probably just going to take max HP. I'm going to throw in one more re-roll, see if we can find a second harvesting set. Do I want 5% crit chance? I think I would rather actually just take armor here because we're going to end up with negative armor from these uh, ethereal weapons. And so you, you need to mitigate that as soon as possible. All right, I'm going to buy this ghost axe. And then I think I will also buy the ghost flint. Obviously, that's still sticking to the use of ethereal weapons clause. Um, the thing that I am not certain of is if I want the peaceful bee here. Obviously getting harvesting going early is good and the dodge chance is nice, but losing melee damage this early, this isn't the ghost who has plus 10 damage on these ethereal weapons, so the melee damage loss on these low tier weapons is pretty painful. I think the peaceful bee getting more harvesting going early is good enough that I am going to buy it here. And then I'm going to reroll. We didn't find any ethereal weapons. I do believe I want the defective steroids though because max HP and melee damage are both really important for us. So I'll lock that, then I'll roll again, and we can lock this ghost axe. Oh, I should have uh, probably combined my axes here to try to farm some percentage damage. That actually was definitely a mistake. We're gonna end up with no, no damage off of this this wave probably because I'm splitting the kills over my two different weapons instead of combining them onto one higher level weapon. We don't need life steal because you get regeneration on this character so you have all of your healing already. I'm going to re-roll and see again if we can get some harvesting going. Try to get that up to 20. We'll take the axe here and I'm going to roll for another ethereal weapon. Scepter. I don't know if I want to try to also build ranged damage here. So I think think I'm going to just buy HP the normal way and focus on flints and axes. So I'm going to buy this ghost flint and roll again. Nothing. Roll again. Nothing. All right. Well, more trees, of course, we're going to buy. 
The question is, do I want to just buy that now, or do I want to try to get my ethereal weapons upgraded? I think we're going to roll for weapons. Getting these upgraded is so useful, so even though we won't be able to buy it, I'm still going to try to lock one in the shop, and I'm going to combine my weapons here. We can have only three weapons on wave three, and this way we're much more likely to get uh, some extra stats here, which is really important. Not getting our sort of one damage point that I could maybe have gotten from last round is definitely bad play. The uh, Ghost Flint is already not one-shotting these enemies. So we need, because I took the Peaceful Bee and decreased my melee damage, so I definitely need to increase that. Luckily, we do have the steroids in the shop. Both armor and dodge are really good on Cryptid because you get so many free points of regeneration, so we're fine there. I'm going to grab Harvesting. Now we're up to 21. That's perfect. And then here, I think I'm going to take Speed, probably. We will need that to dodge around. Although getting some luck going early does help. Luck is worse for the Cryptid than for other characters because you're not breaking trees. So we won't be, we're much less likely to get crates out of this luck, but I think it's still worth grabbing. Um, obviously we can't use lifesteal, so we don't want to buy any of that. Let me pick up the ghost axe for sure. And then I'm going to buy these two as well. Roll again. I'm interested in this cute monkey, although since with 50% less material drops, I think it's just not worth picking up. So I'm going to pass on it. Here, though, I will buy another Ghost Axe, and that's great. Um, flat melee damage is, of course, the, the scaling that you need with these Ghost Weapons, so we're definitely buying the Goat Skull. The Hedgehog, I am not certain because it's less efficient in terms of price since we don't use the ranged damage at all. And then it also reduces our regeneration, which makes it slower for us to get our healing going. I think I will not lock it. Just I would probably buy it in a shop where it was available, but I don't, I don't think we're going to lock it here. It's again possible I should have gone down to only four of these ethereal weapons at this point. Definitely need to avoid breaking that tree there. And the hardest parts of playing this character is the reflex to charge off and break trees. But because um, we don't have the bonus damage that Ghost gets, which is where you you know, most often will have been played with ethereal weapons on the Ghost, of course, I think that this character needs to be much more careful with how you combine weapons, because you're going to need to have very high numbers. Uh, you, you will have a harder time clearing waves since ethereal weapons are so bad. Let me grab this melee damage, and then I'm just going to take 3 HP here. We definitely need to start boosting that, and I don't want to roll too much. I think at this point I really want to complete my weapon set and get everything else going. I will take this melee damage here, and I will definitely take the weird ghost. We have lots of built-in healing. We will need to play care careful at the beginning, because it's going to take a while for the healing to kick in, but it's still worth picking up. Grab the Ghost Flint and roll. Now I've got a full set of weapons, so that's great. Mushroom will help us kick off our healing. So even though the Mushroom is... We will, we have some built-in regen already, we can still buy this just because it gets our regeneration going a little faster. And I am a little nervous about the Weird Ghost wave, so I'm hoping to get that rolling earlier rather than later. Upgrade our flint and roll again, and then here I have another flint, so I'm going to combine and buy this other flint. Definitely locking Gentle Alien. Lemonade is significantly worse on Cryptid than on other characters, but I think it's still worth buying some consumable healing. Um, it's only 25, and consumables are just so valuable for melee characters. Still going to play fairly aggressively, even though we're only at one health, because you need to be farming stats on ethereal weapons. There we go. You can see we are still dropping some consumables. We're a little behind where I'd like to be in terms of farming stats, but we've got more 
defensive stats than you, you will usually have at this point in the game on an ethereal build. And because we are cryptid, we can of course hit 70% dodge, so I'm going to be trying to do that as quickly as we can as well. Ooh, five engineering, that's completely useless. Uh, I would love armor. I think we can get a higher level thing here though, so I'm going to reroll. I don't really want a more health regeneration, so I'm going to reroll again. Wow, these are pretty unlucky shops for us, honestly. Uh, I think I will just take harvesting here. Range is also a consideration, but the minus range is pretty good for this character because it stops you from accidentally breaking trees. So I think we're just going to try to avoid having to deal with that. Notice that we've gotten zero attack speed, or no, we've reduced our attack speed a little bit. So the three attack speed we've gotten has just put us at zero. Um, we will still need to build attack speed and percent damage over the course of this run. You can't just ignore that on ethereal weapons. It does, they do of course help, but you need to remember that they won't solve the whole problem by themselves. I'm going to buy the wheelbarrow. We can't afford coupon and wheelbarrow, right? Yeah, that would be over 90, so the 5% is not going to make a difference here. So we'll buy that and lock the coupon. Where you start really farming stats, of course, is wave 9 with ethereal weapons. So until then, I'm not too worried about what stats we've managed to pick up. On wave 9, we need to make sure that we're actually increasing our stats significantly, otherwise we'll be really behind curve. I sometimes get the question, why do you prioritize consumable healing so heavily? And the reason is that when you have consumables on the ground, you can have burst healing available when you start taking damage. Leaving the consumables on the ground gives you a lot of options in terms of how you play the map, because if you then take a hit, then it will heal you back to full immediately, thanks to your pickup range sucking in all those consumables. So it can be really helpful if you're in a bad situation. Let's grab attack speed here, and then I could start just building more dodge. Dodge is going to be really helpful, of course, and we're, we get a higher dodge cap, so I think I'm just going to start building dodge at this point. We've actually got pretty good melee damage, so I'm pretty happy to buy another Peaceful Bee here. Peaceful Bee is worse on ranged characters than on melee, because it's minus one for each of them, but the melee damage is half as valuable as the ranged damage, so it's really good here. I'm not going to worry about Ugly Tooth, I don't think, because we have 0% speed, and while it is good against elites, we want to be one-shotting everything else. Maybe it's usefulness against elites makes it still worth picking up, but I think I'm going to roll past it here. I'm gonna grab this tree, grab the armor. We definitely need to raise our armor, though. Negative armor is so bad for a character, so I'd really like to get that going a little higher. And buy this lemonade, and then we don't use lifesteal, of course, at all, but we don't really need the increased range. Bonus attack speed is good, of course, but I think we can do better than Banner. It's just a pretty inefficient item overall. I'll buy this Ghost Axe and get that, get those upgrading. And then I think I'm going to buy Head Injury here. We want our percent damage high, so even though we are increasing it with our axes, I think it's still worth buying that. So next priority is getting my move speed back up. Um, on ethereal builds, you should try to break the eggs because you don't want to be wasting time just hitting the high health enemies. So even though you get a little less money, that's less impact impactful for the um, cryptid because enemies are worth 50% less anyways. And how that manifests for these guys is that they only have a 50% chance of dropping any money. So they're normally worth three but it's a 50% chance of dropping zero rather than dropping one and a half. Had to rely on my dodges a little there because we're having some trouble actually clearing the large slashers out of the way. Definitely feeling like we're behind in this build um, because this weapon set is not good for this character, but I think we can make it work. 
I will take some melee damage here, I think, and then I just want max HP. Although, of course, I will take harvesting and consumable heal. Our consumable heal is going to end up quite high at this point, so I, I should prioritize luck as well. And then I'm going to upgrade my ghost flint. Do I want more regen? I think we're going to pass on regen and just rely on our natural regen. I will buy weird ghost, though. Efficient way to increase our max HP. And I will definitely buy more trees. More ghost flints is good. Keep rolling a little bit. Little muscly dude is the item I was kind of most hoping to see. This will give us 5 max HP and melee damage. And of course, more negative range doesn't really matter. I'm going to pass on the mushroom, I think. I guess it's fairly cheap, and I do want to start snowballing my regen, but I think I'm still going to pass on it. It's very possible that I just take a random hit from one of these guys and die here. Our damage is not high enough to one-shot the chargers, so... Oh, yep. Alright, well, we were rescued by percent chance of dodging there, but certainly not the, the finest play that you've ever seen me walking at two health into an enemy shot. Something I should keep in mind is that we do have good consumable heal, so I can break trees in an emergency if I just need burst healing, and I should really be keeping that in mind as an option, even though it costs us a little money. Um, better, than, better than dying. There, I took a bunch of damage, but in these later sections of the wave, your defensive stats are so high. Your, your regen is so high and you've got good defensive stats that it's much less dangerous for you in the later sections of these waves. Crit chance is not bad here because we're building the other stats all kind of for free, so I'll take crit chance for sure. Definitely not taking barricade. I will take luck because more consumables is really good here. Definitely take the coupon. Little muscly dude. So Handle, normally actually pretty good on Cryptid because your money doesn't come from enemies. And so you often want to actually decrease the number of enemies on the field. But um, just to make it easier to just get trees. But because we're ethereal, then we definitely can't buy stuff like Candle. Wave 9, I think it's still fine to just buy Weird Ghosts and... Metal Detector is half as good on this character as on other characters, so I'm going to pass on it. I think Bait, we obviously can't buy in the same round as Weird Ghost, so I'm going to avoid that. I'll get this coffee, roll again, and then really happy to see a Metal here getting our speed back to positive is good, and I will decrease it again because I really don't want to get one shot, but keeping our speed near one is really important. Would love to increase my armor more, but otherwise, I think we're a little happier than we were a moment ago. Alright. Picked up a couple consumables, no longer in danger of dying in one hit. Weird Ghost is, at, is like quite dangerous for this character, because the short range means it's harder for you not to get hit. Once we hit the late game, we should have... Enough free offensive stats from our weapons and enough free defensive stats from being cryptid that we should be we should be okay. Charging into big groups of enemies here because I really want to maximize my farm income. And we've got enough healing that we should be okay to do that. Just trying to play in a small circle near the center of the arena. Make sure that there are a lot of trees spawning elsewhere on the map. Oh, I shouldn't have broken that one, but that's okay. I will definitely take... No, I won't take White Flag because we're ethereal. Normally on Cryptid, I think this is actually a good item, but we're ethereal weapons, so we can't. I'm going to reroll this. Our attack speed is starting to increase significantly because we've got a bunch of coffees as well, and I guess I will just take Dodge here. Trying to get our Dodge to 70% as soon as we can, so I'm going to reroll... And then also I want to buy max HP, but here I think the best thing is going to be melee damage to make sure that I'm continuing to actually kill stuff. We need to have enough defensive stats and also enough damage to kill the elite next wave, so I need to keep in mind that that's the goal here. We can't take repost because this is 
an ethereal build, so we don't want to have anything that gives us a chance of having... of not killing stuff with our ethereal weapons. Bait, still the percent damage is good. We might take a lot of damage, but I think it's worth buying. Even though we are building percent damage from our weapons, I think it's still worth it, because it was only at like 40%. So until we start getting like 200%, it's still worth building stuff. Always avoid Lumberjack shirt on the Cryptid here, of course. So we're passing on this whole shop, but very happy to see Leather Vest. This is the best item we could have picked up. And because that brings our armor actually back up to zero. So we're finally back to par on armor. Two baits in the same wave is quite risky. And our next wave is an elite wave. So I'm going to roll past this bait because I don't think we want it on either this wave or next wave. And then here I am able to upgrade the Ghost Axe and buy Shady Potion. I also, I think, do want the Medical Turret. It's a way to provide burst healing that this character kind of is missing. Although it's sometimes hard to play around the Medical Turret. But we are going into an Elite Wave. It might keep us alive in the early wave. I think I'm going to pass on it, but it, it's something worth considering anyways. Just going to accept taking some damage from these bait aliens. Because dodging can cost you kills since you can't uh, can't play in groups of enemies when you're trying to dodge every hit. And we really want to be maximizing our stat game from ethereal weapons. We're now at the point where our dodge is significant enough that I'm feeling less concerned about just taking some hits ever. And as you can see, we're storing up consumables on the ground, so whenever I take, and we have six consumable healing, so whenever I take a hit, it pulls in some fruits and we immediately heal that back up. I don't know if we're going to be able to kill the elite or if we're going to have to run from it, but I think trying to kill it is going to be our best bet. Here, I had better take speed, though, because minus negative speed going into an elite wave is rough. I definitely want HP, but we can't take Weird Ghost, of course. So let me upgrade to three level three axes. And then hopefully we find something that gives me HP or survivability. Blindfold is good. Vigilante Ring is still going to be good here, so I, I should just take that. Fertilizer, I think, will also be good. This is definitely putting me at risk going into this elite wave because I'm going to lose out on some melee damage. Um, so that makes my overall damage output lower. But I think this is still correct. Blood donation will be quite good next wave if we survive because, of course, we build regeneration over the course of the wave anyways. I will then need to buy some actual healing, I think, because the blood donation damage might add up too quickly. And then here, do I want a level 4 flint or a level 4 axe and more flints? I think I'd rather combine flints. And then let's see if we can burst this guy down before we get in too much trouble. Okay, took a hit there. Not my finest dodging, really. But luckily we have high percent dodge, so I feel like I have been playing this fight fairly badly. Gonna back off a little bit and try to wait for some trees to spawn, keep me alive, uh, get my regen built up. Oh, there's a loot alien too. Can we can we get both of them? I I would say that this has been mechanically not one of my best runs. I've been walking into enemies a lot. Um, luckily, Cryptid is a fairly powerful character, so even though I haven't been playing super well, we're able to kind of be carried on the strength of the build and the character. Going to recycle this, but very happy we got out of that. Oh, uh, no, bloody hand. <laughs> wow, what an insult. So obviously we can't pick this because it would reduce our damage by 200%. Um, that that really sucks to get this as our, uh, as our offered weapon, so sadly have to recycle that. Let me 
do I just want to take level 3 max HP here? I think I'm going to reroll once and see if I can get something better. I'm just going to take luck here. We've got 69% dodge. Nice. So we're going to sit on that for a while, as, as one might. Uh, and then I'm going to pick up more maximum, uh, more melee damage. Let me get this blood donation. Uh, I will definitely take the dangerous bunny. I'm not going to take handcuffs. We don't really need eight melee damage at this point. Our melee damage is actually pretty good. So, and of course, capping our max HP would be really bad. Capping my speed is less... Uh, less of a downside, but also Shackles has much less of an upside here, and the increasing our range would be fine, but 8 HP regeneration I don't think we use, and obviously 8 engineering we don't use at all. Or rather, I do want to buy some HP regeneration, but the engineering we don't use and paying that much for 8 HP regeneration I think is bad. I'm going to keep upgrading my weapons, and can I buy Acid and upgrade the Ghost Axe here? I think I can't, but I can buy the Ghost Axe and the Blindfold, lock the Acid, and we'll still have 70% dodge after we pick that up. So we're going to lose some health off the start of this round. But hopefully we can... Oh, ouch. All right. Generated a few uh, consumables there, and that's good. No, I killed that tree. Tree spawned right under me, and I couldn't get out of the way in time. This is a uh, wave twelve is a fairly tough wave for this character because you don't have a lot of room to maneuver because you want to avoid breaking trees, and then also it's a. Let me try to get that guy before he. Before the loot alien dives into the forest and can't be chased down. Um, you don't have a lot of room to maneuver because of all the trees and it's all chargers. And then the high health, like, ribcage enemies are pretty problematic for the cryptid, typically. Now, we've started to build pretty good at offensive stats, thanks to our ethereal weapons. So at this point, I'm feeling much better about the game overall. Definitely just taking this. More speed is good. And max HP is what we need more than anything else grab here more regen. Plant is the best way to buy regen, of course, on this character, because you don't use the life seal, and the regen does help. The faster you get that to a reasonable number, the more, the less you have to worry about just dying before your regen comes online. Gonna upgrade and buy this ghost axe. Roll again. Peaceful B. I mean... The harvesting is still actually kind of useful at this point, so I might just buy it. And we actually have good consumable heals, um, so I'm going to buy the garden because that will help keep us alive. I'm going to pass on injection. Our percent damage is pretty good, and we need the max HP more than we need anything else. Here, I will definitely buy wheat next round, and I'm going to buy the duct tape here as well, though I need max HP quite badly. Zero armor is still way too low for me to to be comfortable, so I would really like to prioritize getting my armor up to about, at like, at least 5, but preferably 10. One downside of the blood donation is that we can't store consumables on the ground for future use now. If, like, if I walk near them, it's always going to pull them in, even though I'm only missing one health. Seventy percent dodge now means I can play fairly aggressively with my positioning because we're unlikely to take several hits in a row. But I can only take two hits before dying at this point in the in the game. I think if I take three hits in a row, I die. So I need to be a little careful about my positioning in that respect. Broke that tree, but at least we got a crate out of it. <laughs> Say these tentacles are fairly dangerous, but at this point now I've got enough trees that our regen is is pretty insane. Like at the end of this wave, let's see, what are, what's my regeneration? Ah, the trees all despawned before I hit it. Uh, I'm going to recycle this. We don't need 3% dodge for minus 4% damage, and we do actually want additional enemies. Often you wouldn't want mouse uncrypted, because the lifesteal isn't useful, and additional enemies don't give you half as much money, but the this build, of course, wants to be building 
ethereal damage. I'll still take the mushroom even though I want luck, because like I said, snowballing our regeneration ahead is pretty good. Melee damage will help since we're multiplying all of those stats. Very happy to see this shop, so let's roll past all this, or let's buy all this and then roll. Roll again here. Focus, 30% damage, and we lose some attack speed. That's still going to be pretty good, I think. Basically, we get minus 6% attack speed plus 30% damage. I think that's, that's worth locking and buying. Let me hit this guy. So what you want... This guy is, an, is one that's much easier to fight as a ranged character than as a melee. And also, wave 14 is really difficult for this uh, character, as it often is for many characters, but especially melee characters when there's an elite. So I'm going to be trying to wait to engage this fight until I have cleared out at least some of the summons. I don't know if we're going to be able to kill this elite, because my damage is pretty low, and... I'm having trouble engaging with all of the uh, all the summons and all the projectiles. Like I basically can't dodge, so I'm just relying on my defensive stats at this point. So let me <laughs> run around and hope that we regen enough. Yep, that was that was another pretty badly fought uh, badly fought wave by me. Let me see what we want here. I do actually want pickup range and harvesting, so I'm going to buy the little frog, because we have more than our dodge cap anyways. It's it's funny playing some of these, because I feel like I play worse, just because I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to play at the same time as I am actually playing, since these are all unusual builds. Let me... Continue to buy more move speed, I think. The damage being... Our damage falling behind like that as we're building up damage with ethereal weapons is really not a good sign for the direction of this character. <laughs> you really expect, once you've hit wave 14 or so with ethereal weapons, to have built up enough damage that you aren't having trouble doing stuff like killing elites. But... Given that, that we were in that particular situation with all the summons and just taking so many, so much damage, it was so hard to position myself where I wasn't getting hit. And I just really had to just rely on my stats to get me out of that. As we're kind of having to do here. You can see the, the fact that we have to play in such a small area to avoid breaking trees. Um is a real downside for this character when we have bought stuff like Mouse and Gentle Alien. There's actually not a lot of available space for us to play in. Once enough trees have spawned, I can start tanking enemies with impunity, but until that happens, it's tough. I'm going to buy the stone skin here. We want to prioritize buying armor anyways, so even though it doesn't help us right now, it will later. Um, and I'm actually going to recycle this. We don't need more speed, and I, I want to start building crit chance as a real component of my damage setup. And buy the armor here, that's great. And so those two things help a lot. Now our HP is significantly better. We want to avoid rip and tear to make sure that we're still farming stats on our ethereal weapons. Although I will definitely take hunting trophy. We've got 15% crit chance, which isn't a lot, but as we start building a little more, we can make that work for us. Definitely buying metal plate. Now that I have six armor and a lot more max HP as a result of that, I'm feeling quite a bit better about this build. Definitely not buying alien baby here, though I think I probably will buy the snail. That will make it a little easier for us to play around the large number of enemies we're spawning. I'm not going to reroll again. I've rerolled a lot and it's starting to get really expensive. So at this point, armor and crit chance are basically the only things I really need. I'd take more just health regeneration too, just to get that, get our healing online earlier in these waves. That matters a lot against elites. Trying to make sure I'm clearing the, the 
buffing aliens, because if you let those build up too many of them, you can really put yourself in danger. And aliens can always hide in the forest in this for this character, so you have to make sure to get them before it costs you a tree to hunt them down. These random random runs are really fun, so I will definitely keep doing this, but do let me know also what else you want to see me cover. Um, I know I've gotten a lot of ideas from people, which I've really enjoyed, and looking forward to continuing to do more Brotato stuff. I'm definitely going to take the Mammoth here. We wanted regen, we wanted, we of course want melee damage, and our damage was starting to feel pretty lackluster. So, very happy to see that. That's one of the better items we could have seen. I'm going to pass on the Ritual here. Upgrade my Ghost Flint, though. Um, nothing I can combine to buy this Ghost Flint. That's fine. I'll keep buying Gentle Alien, because I do want to keep farming more stats. And then... I'm going to buy this Hedgehog as well. Our melee damage is now quite high, and we're multiplying it by... 100 by 200 percent from our percent damage and we've got high attack speed i really want crit chance but everything else i think is going quite well yeah now we're now we're one-shotting the rib cages so that's much better now that i've bought 20 more melee damage mammoth was an excellent find that really brought this build together i don't think we you know needed it to win or anything but it's turned this build from being fairly weak and having to play pretty scared to being pretty strong, I would say. Not that I can just charge into enemies with impunity, though. I need to be careful about that. When these tentacles get the buff, they're very scary, because normally what makes them not a super dangerous enemy is just that they're slow and you can just walk away from them. Man, I am having to kill so many trees. But I'm very happy to just charge into these big groups of enemies and farm stats off of them. Definitely take Garden, that's really good. We don't need more attack speed, so I'm going to reroll this, look for anything else that we might want. I'll just take 10 luck here. 33 is such an expensive reroll. I don't think we need more melee damage. I really just want crit chance and armor. Those are basically the only stats we really care about at this point. Tardigrade doesn't do anything because we have um, blood donation. So I will upgrade the ghost flint. Do I want the shackles here? Eight regeneration does help us against elites. Just we'll have a bunch of starting regeneration. And we don't need to go over 22 speed. I think I am now going to buy the shackles. I didn't before, but I think at, at this point it's worth getting. Recycling machine will probably not, will probably have time to pay for itself, but I don't know that it's better to buy that rather than get stats now when we're about to fight an elite. Because it's basically, we're gonna have two end of wave sets of crates. So it will probably give me 100 materials, but I think I'd rather roll and try to find something that will help us not die to the elite. Hunting trophy is not going to be worth enough money at this point, I don't think, to buy, but acid will be very good, and we're still over dodge cap when I buy that. Let me lock this, because we can upgrade a weapon. There we go. This, this damage is much more like it. All right. That is the thing about the ethereal builds, is if you make it through the early game, then you sure do end up strong. The other thing about ethereal weapons is that they often want to be paired with lifesteal, um, which you can't do on the cryptid, so 
that's another weird downside for them with the Cryptid, because one of the advantages that you get from them is that they attack super fast, so you'll be life stealing constantly. Definitely just going to take 6 armor here, that's also 6 max HP, and that basically solves all our defensive issues. So, feeling pretty good about this one. Yeah, I'll just keep taking armor, upgrade this. Do I want to just buy 4% dodge just to make sure I'm over dodge cap if I buy negative dodge? I think I'm going to pass on the Peaceful Bee. Yeah, because we can get it from something like this Leather Vest. I think the coupon actually will still pay for itself, even only in the last wave, because I'm already immediately buying everything here. And then I do want the crit chance, I think, because we've got the hunting trophies. So I'll lock the night goggles um, and then go to wave 19. I guess not, that won't help with the hunting trophy, but crit chance will vastly increase my damage output as well, because it's, it's my lowest damage stat by far. So I think increasing our, our crit chance is going to help us kill the bosses much quicker as well. Having enough regen that you can play the early game of these waves more aggressively, I think, is really important for the ethereal build on Cryptid here. One of the issues we were having earlier, so maybe I should have prioritized getting regen more. Um, one of the issues we were having earlier was that I had to play pretty safe in the early parts of a wave, so I just wasn't building up the stats on my ethereal weapons that I wanted to. So I think it's very possible that if you want to follow this build, you should prioritize regen more heavily than I did. Recycle this, of course, get more luck. And I think I'd actually rather have two armor than 9 max HP, because it's also 2 max HP, and I think that will actually increase our survivability more. Let me take this crit chance, and then I'm going to roll here. Move speed is capped, so I don't want the wings. Lemonade, I guess lemonade and mushroom will both help. And then any additional damage I can get. Nothing here matters. Keep rolling. Nope, don't want bag. Luck is still fine because it gets me consumable drops, but I think I'm going to still avoid that here. All right, here's an upgrade and a metal plate, and that gets us almost maxed weapons for wave 20. 85 attack speed from this one level 4 ghost flint. 107 from this one uh, ghost axe, so that's really fun. And we just focus them down one at a time. And of course our regen will build up as we get trees on the map. And there you have it. Alright, well that feels good. Sort of a redemption arc after I died to the bosses last time. We just like very easily knocked them both down this time. So that was the Cryptid with Ethereal Weapons, ending up with a pretty ridiculous late game build. Just tons and tons of damage. Um, as always, my friends, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, do please take the time to, to like the video, leave a comment. Really appreciate it when people do that. And you can, of course, subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game content. And let me know what other stuff you'd like to see. I've got endless runs and modded characters definitely coming for sure. But if there's anything else you want to see covered, do let me know. All right, my friends, cheers, and I'll catch you next time.